Welcome, mortals. I'm Dark Lord Kaiser. We're back with the Binding of Isaac for basically no reason. I'll be the first to admit I just felt like playing this one today. Hope that's not a concern. Uh, let's see. Let's play with Zazel, because why not? So, I've done a fair few uh, videos over the past couple of weeks that have been over an hour long. I can see how that would be a little bit off-putting to people who uh, <laughs> who are just sort of seeing the video pop up because hour-long videos are fine once or twice, but uh, not everyone has an hour to kill every day to go hunting those videos. So I'm going to try and keep this one a fair bit shorter. Spider butt. I have no idea what that does. Okay, let's go find some enemies and throw it at it. That is not an enemy. What was I saying? Oh yeah, I'm hoping this video will be shorter. I don't know yet. Um, oh, it's mass slowdown. Okay. I can work with mass slowdown. Mass slowdown is fine. It did not last very long, did it? Eh, didn't really need to, I suppose. Right, moving on. So, what should we talk about today? Can I get the heart? Oh, okay. So I have been... Ow, ow, ow. The problem with Isaac is it's very hard to start a conversation because all of a sudden everything starts happening at once. What's the same? So I have been trying to write another um, video sort of in the, the style of the analogy of the tap dancer. Not quite to, uh, to that degree though. Um... And again, it, it'll be about Brexit, because there's always something to talk about Brexit. More specifically, I want to talk about the Brexit party. It, it's hard to say anything about the Brexit party, for the very simple reason, as there's little to say about them. I mean, they have no information, there's nothing about what they actually stand for. I mean, even their their website doesn't have a manifesto or anything like that. They they just exist. That is literally it. And there's very real danger that they're going to get a lot of um, votes in the, um, the European elections that are coming up. And I'm dead. I'm not really playing that seriously, so I'm not too worried about dying. Um, but yeah, the, the Brexit Party, the... The only thing I can say for a fact that they stand for is Nigel Farage, and the only thing I can say for a fact they stand against is the European Union. And that, that's literally all the information there is available on the Brexit party. Which is absolutely absurd. I'm excited. Good for you, voice in my head. Or headphones, I suppose I should say. I'm excited isn't very good because it speeds everything up. <laughs> Go away, please. Ow. God damn it. So, so I, I, I want, basically I want to make a video about the Brexit Party, or more specifically Nigel Farage, because there's nothing to say about the Brexit Party. And I basically, I, I have one very simple message that I want to try and convey. If you support the idea of Brexit still, which obviously a lot of people do, I don't agree that uh, there is any logical reason to do such a thing, but you are, I suppose, entitled to the opinion that uh, it is still in the best interest of the country. I still admit I have no idea how you could possibly come to that conclusion given any of the information available. Not how it's, not the theory in, pre in principle, not the way it's been handled. I, I honestly, as I respect your, your you having that opinion, I just don't understand how you can come to it. That's that's all I'm saying. Anyway, but um, if you still support the concept of Brexit, don't vote for the Brexit Party. There is, I, I know that the thing you support is literally in their name, but that doesn't mean that they are the best party for you to be voting for. Obviously, this won't apply to anybody outside of the country, but um, let, let me try and explain. 
the Brexit Party have no opinions about anything other than Brexit. And Brexit has nothing to do with the uh, members of the European Parliament. They have no say on it, no authority on it, anything like that. It's certainly not the ones in our country. They won't be able to vote on the uh, on the deals or anything like that. Um, red spike. Red spike. So if you support Brexit still, then your best bet would be to support a party that actually has realistic opinions about Brexit or is competent enough to, you know, actually be able to do stuff as part of the European uh, Parliament. If you were to put a Brexit party member of Parliament in uh, Europe, if you were to make a Europe a, let me, this sentence is weirder to say than I thought it was going to be. If you make a member of the Brexit Party a member of the European Parliament, what are they actually going to be able to do? Take take the worst... Well, for people who want Brexit, take assume the worst case scenario that we will not be able to leave the European Union until October. The end of October. That means you've got most of a year in which you will have a member on the European Parliament um, committee, Parliament, you know what I mean. In that situation, surely you want someone who knows what they're doing and is willing to make um, decisions which will be in the best interest of the country post-Brexit. The Brexit Party don't know what they're doing. It would be, at best, ill-advised to give them the sort of uh, power that they want. Because, alright, let me put it this way. Nigel Farage is the leader of the Brexit Party. Nigel Farage has been um, a member of the European uh, Parliament for uh, close enough 20 years. While he was a member of the... Um, what was it? it was the Fisheries Committee, uh, which the fishing industry was a big topic in terms of Brexit because the European Union's rulings on um, fishing industry did cause massive trouble to the uh, British fishing industry. A bit of water running in the background. Hopefully that won't be picked up, but we will find out in the, uh, the thing. Happens. Right, so while he was a member of the... Um, Fisheries Committee, there were 42 bits of legislation, or 42 votes, he was um, entitled to vote on. In all of the time he was on that committee, he voted once. Several of those votes, he was in the building while the vote was taking place, but did not register a vote. This is not a man who has the best interests of the country at heart. He cares about two things, namely himself and also getting rid of foreign people. Not, not all foreign people, he seems to have something specifically against Romanians. Um, he likes the Germans enough to marry one and have German children. Um, he's pro-Australian immigration and Indian immigration for, uh, for some reason. Uh, but yeah, again, he seems to have something against specifically Romanians. Um, Syrians, he doesn't like them. Um, if you will remember from the... I don't know why I came in here. Ah, oh, sod it. I'll take it. Why not? Um, if you remember from the um, Remain campaign, one of the um, Remain posters that he is photographed standing in front of, though I, will, I can't say whether it was uh, a UKIP-specific one. I wouldn't be surprised if it was. Um, but I can't say for a fact that it was. It was the one that used um, Nazi imagery, in that it was a copy of a Nazi poster in which uh, basically it was making a long line of Jews and they went, oh, look at how bad the Jews are. And uh, I believe, well, the Remain Party, I believe it was you, not Remain Party, sorry, the Remain campaign, and I believe it was UKIP specifically, put that sort of imagery up of the um, Syrian, Syrian refugees. There's certainly some refugees. The problem is that A, you're using Nazi propaganda, you tool, and second, 
none of the people who were actually pictured in the uh, the poster had any legal right to come to this country based on European rules. They that's why there was a um, the camps were at Calais because they couldn't legally enter the UK, so they didn't. He doesn't like foreign people. That is basically his raison d'etre. Again, for some reason, not all foreign people he... I don't know. Germans he's fine with. Indians he's fine with. Australians he's fine with. He seems to like their anti-immigration policies. Funny that. But no, he doesn't actually care about this country. If anything, all he wants is the flipping pension that will come from being a former member of the European Parliament. Um, so yeah, don't, don't vote Brexit. Well, don't vote the Brexit Party. Um, if, as I said, you want to uh, support Brexit, then you're best off voting Conservative, arguably Labour, um, though Labour are doing that infuriating thing where they, have, they aren't actually willing to commit to any single idea. They'll uh, make a huge thing about how they'll support a second referendum if and only if followed by a long list of caveats. Um, their argument being basically that if they can't get the deal they want, they'll campaign for a second referendum. The problem is, there's a faulty logic in that. Either you believe that the people of the country deserve a final say on the, on the uh, results of the Brexit negotiations, or you don't. But to say, oh, they should have it unless it's our deal, shows you don't actually have faith that people would vote for your deal if given the choice. And if we can't have faith in the deal that you want, why should we have faith in you as a party? It's it's a bad uh, bad situation to be in. Which is pity because I quite... For the most part, I like Jeremy Corbyn's ideals. It just seems to be a bit... Um, what's the word? He's not... Non-committed. It's very hard to say what he actually stands for because he won't say what he stands for. And given that the majority of the Labour voters, I believe, um, were pro-Remain, uh, um, certainly that's the information I've seen, but I can't cite the source that information came from, so I will um, admit there may be some error in that particular value. It seems weird that he can't just say, oh yeah, we'll just have a confirmatory referendum regardless, but the deal we want is this, if we're having one. It's... Yeah, he'd be able to get a lot of people on his side, I think, if he was just, if he would just commit to something rather than if ands and buts. Uh, so yeah, as I said, if you if you're going to support Brexit in its entirety and you want to use the European elections as a means to make your opinion on Brexit specifically heard, your best bet is voting Conservative. If like me, you think that uh, Brexit is a terrible idea. Jeez, well, I'm getting really bad luck with those flipping pills. Um, and specifically, a very bad idea that's been handled exceedingly badly. <laughs> then you uh, need to you need to make a choice about who you're going to vote for a bit more carefully. Um, Liberal Democrats would be certainly an option. They are um, one of the few parties. Well, not one of the few. One of the bigger parties that are willing to um, out and out state they'll, they'll be um, campaigning for a confirmatory referendum. The Green Party, I believe, are uh, in that camp as well. Um, the independent group, what they call Change UK or something like that, they're uh, an option too. Or you could just vote for an independent party uh, in general. Um, if you hate um, you know, as I said, um, you hate the eye of the fact that Brexit hasn't happened yet. I suppose you could vote UKIP, but that's that's. I would also consider that a bad idea. Um, yeah, given how much stick the Labour Party's been getting this past uh, few months over anti-Semitic comments, uh, you think voting for an out-and-out racist party would not be a good idea? Uh, what am I waffling on now? I said there's a, the reason I wanted to make this into a. Um, a scripted video is because as soon as I start talking on my own, I, uh, well, as soon as I, I start talking off script, 
God only knows what uh, I'm going to end up saying. Particularly when I'm trying to concentrate on six things at once. Die, you stupid ghost face. Die. Oh, this thing. Um, I did see a uh, something on Reddit. This, I think it was this morning. Either this morning or last night. I can't remember exactly when. Um, that did do a sort of a flowchart of how to vote in the uh, European elections. I'm not sure I agree with everything that they uh, they stated on there. Um, so some um, parties had more than one um, arrow pointing to them. So um, Conservatives would have those two or three options that would lead to that. The only option that would get you to vote Labour, for example, uh, was if you were anti-Semitic. That was literally the only... You had to go through quite a few... Um, the word. Quite a few choices to get there, but the last option was are you an anti semite basically? Which I think is unfair for Labour as a whole. Not that they don't have a problem with that, um, but there are more reasons to vote Labour than you just don't like Jewish people. I said, I wish I could remember more of the, uh, the things on it. I did think it was quite funny that um, so, okay, the, the, that issue, it broke. the question was, oh, who do you uh, dislike the most? And there was Muslims, and that took you to... Uh, oh, I can't remember who the, uh, the Muslims one took you to. Uh, Jews was... Actually, oh, maybe it wasn't Muslims. Maybe it was just um, foreigners in general took you to the Brexit party. Jews took you to the Labour Party, and people with joined up handwriting took you to UKIP. Which, I will admit, made me chuckle. Damn it. Die. But, uh, yeah, not, uh, not an infallible resource. But I'd, he wasn't intended as a, uh, a serious follow this to find out who you should be voting for thing. It was a, a basic breakdown, but with a semi-comedic slant. I wouldn't go as far to call it a satirical, um, but it was not intended to be you know, the thing that actually decided anyone's uh, voting opinions. Okay, okay. Uh, let's go in the arcade. Why the hell not? I didn't mean this entire video to be based solely on Brexit, but that does appear to be where I've ended up. <laughs> so I'm 20 minutes in, and this video isn't going to last much longer. I really should have just made this into a pick with it, shouldn't I? Pretending I know what I'm talking about. I know that that's pretty clear. That's not words. <laughs> I know that that is, I try to say um, pretty much and basically it's the same word. That's what happened there. For those of you who are wondering what on earth was going on in my head. Has I got this horse power? I don't actually know what the horse does. Bomb key, bomb. Um, I know that pretty much everything I say is a case of me pretending I know what I'm talking about rather than actually knowing what I'm talking about, but I like to think there's some lot well, a train of logic behind what I'm saying that can be fairly easily followed, if not agreed with, but, you know, you're entitled to have differing opinions. So I have no objection to, have to people having other opinions. <laughs> the only thing I want from people who have other opinions to be able to do is justify them, and for the most part, certainly on things like Brexit, people can justify their opinions. Uh, Neo Rambler, for example, he is very much pro Brexit, and he can justify why he thinks that way. I don't agree with him, and I um, personally think that uh, his reasoning could be the, the issues that he raises could be resolved in other ways that would be less damaging to the country as a whole. Um, in fact, I'd be willing to go as far as to say that many of the issues that I, you know, if my understanding of his um, reasoning is correct. Many of the issues he raises are problems that should be resolved internally rather than externally. That it's a problem that has been caused by um, the long-running Conservative government rather than the, Europe um, the UK's relationship with Europe. But again, he's fully entitled to have a different opinion on that. Chances are it's probably a fair bit of both. Um, but uh, you know, I'm of the opinion that if you want to change the way the EU works with the UK, you need to actually work with the EU. Um, and Brexit doesn't work with the EU, it surrenders all of our powers to them. 
think about it this way. If we want to trade with the EU, we will still have to work within certain restrictions. Restrictions that the EU will have set. So take, for example, um, chicken. The uh, UK currently has no um, deal with the, U uh, the US when it comes to importing chicken because chlorinated chicken is illegal under um, EU regulations. Now the US has obviously had no say in that particular um, bit of legislation. Why would they? They're not part of the EU. Uh, and the... oops, didn't actually mean to go in here, but never mind. The reasoning behind why um, chlorinated chicken is illegal uh, to import into the, the EU is basically it's a combination of hygiene and moral issues. So um, the welfare standard for animals in within the EU are higher than those in the US. The US counter those hygiene issues with chlorinated chicken. Their, their chickens are raised in worse standards so that they have more contaminants, bacteria, salmonella, that kind of thing. So to counter that, they dip them in uh, chlorine, um, which is generally considered... Well, the, the FDA considers to be uh, perfectly uh, safe for human consumption. There is scientific evidence to suggest that actually um, it isn't, or is not as safe as other meats. Um, but the point is, the <laughs> getting a bit off topic here. Point is, the EU made that decision, and the US were powerless to stop them making it. Now, obviously, we have higher animal welfare standards than the EU in general. That's uh, one of the beautiful things about the UK is that we um, are a nation that treats animals even better than the EU says we have to. Um, and if we wanted to get the EU on our side, we'd need to stay in the EU and get them to push their levels. That's not quite. The point is that if the EU... Let's say there was a different um, animal welfare in rule that the EU decided uh, was no longer acceptable. So, I don't know. Um, let's say there was a really... Oh, this is an entirely hypothetical example. Let's say that there was a hypothetical mushroom that, when fed to pigs, um, made them... Um, incapable of feeling full. So the end result is that the pigs ended up eating more. Um, and so you ended up with bigger, fatter pigs, more meat to sell, and the mushrooms were so cheaply producible that actually the profits you made easily countered the... Um, uh, yeah, sure, well, Easily countered the cost of buying these mushrooms in. Now, if the EU had concerns about the the chemicals in that mushroom making their way into the human food chain, which is you know why they don't drug the hell out of animals before we eat, before we eat them. Um, but the UK exclusively um, grew animals based on this feeding method. I said we'd have to change our um, our agricultural industry to match what the EU is as mandated despite not being part of the EU, because we want to trade with the EU, because they're our biggest trading partner. Ow, so it's guns. I hate the place guns. Um, and because we're not in the EU, we would have completely revoked our right to be able to stop that thing before it happened. Uh, I hate the invisible ones. Yes, the invisible ones are too bad, they're just irritating. Oh, where am I now? Oh, hello. It's bad Santa. Bad lasers. Oh, no, 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 die. Stop being a thing that exists. Die. There we go. So, yes, my argument as to why we should stay in the EU is basically that if we want to not be ruled by the EU, we need to actually <laughs> have a say in what the rules are. Um... I, I'll be perfectly honest, I've completely lost track of whatever train of logic I had to get me to that conversation in the first place. This is a very distracting game. Everything's made of death. Everything be dead. There we go. What's this? Ace of clubs. Convert all. Uh, I don't want to lose that. Yeah, I'll convert that into a bomb. Why not? Oh, 
Right, I'm not going to play for too much longer. I suspect I'll just... Don't want bad trips, are there? Don't speed down either, damn it. I'll just uh, go to the next boss and depending on whatever happens there, we'll it seems to be a recurring theme of me using Isaac to talk about completely unrelated things. That's what I did with the, the, um, the game theory um, episode, where it was all out. But, um, what was he talking about? Oh, it was the, the multi-channel network stuff. Um, yeah, and I used Isaac to be the background for me for doing that as well. I'm not sure why. I think it's because it's a relatively straight... Well, not straightforward, but it's easy enough to sort of um, play in autopilot. You don't have to do a huge amount of thinking. It's go to room, kill all the things, and every now and then you stop to, uh, to do a thought. What's this? Are you a wizard? Does this shoot die? No, it doesn't do much for this one. And um, eeny, meeny, miny. As I'm not continuing on this much longer, let's just put it in the. Ooh. Purity. Neat. L. Sorry. Damn. I had trains of thoughts, and all of them were gone. There's the problem. As soon as you uh, change. Because I'm playing everything on autopilot, and I'm talking on autopilot then uh, it's very hard to keep particular strains of logic going. So, there's a good chance that I've started six conversations again and forgotten all of them. I, I know I have a habit of doing that. Particularly if, to try and uh, make a point, I have to go down a slightly non-sequitur train of logic, like with the whole chicken thing. Then you've got to come up with the example, relay the example back to what you were talking about in the first place and then you know relate that back to the overall topic and that's that's too many things I'm pretty smart but uh, my brain isn't that good and I know I make this claim a lot but uh, actually it's very much an area that uh, my dyslexia pops up so the the area that my dyslexia mainly um, causes issues with is what's called working memory uh, working memory is where you're uh, holding information in your head and using it at the same time. So an example would be uh, mental arithmetic. If you want to do 73 times 48, and you need to break those numbers down to smaller parts to do the um, multiplications, you've got to then end up keeping all of those numbers in your head and using numbers at the same time. And that's an area I really struggle with. Now, you may have noticed that I defeated the boss and I've kept, I'm still going. That was not going to go for much longer. I literally just want to finish the sentence I was going. So, yes. In summary, Brexit Party bad. Nigel Farage very bad. Vote in the EU um, elections if you can, but please choose sensibly. The Brexit Party and UKIP are not sensible options. They don't know what they're doing. And when they get elected... They legitimately don't do the things that you would want them to do if they stood for the things they claimed to stood for. As I said, Nigel Farage was in the Fisheries Committee in the European um, uh, European Fisheries Committee. Forty-two votes. He voted in one of them. If he cared about British interests, he would have been in every single one of those votes, making sure he was doing what was the best choice for the British population. He doesn't care about you. He cares about getting attention for himself getting money for himself. He used to be a banker, um, so he had a lot of... Well, he's a broker, not a banker, I suppose. Um, so he's got a lot of investments in the EU that will do very well if we aren't part of them anymore because our economy is going to go down. Their economy is going to go up. It's a bad idea. I don't like Brexit. I don't know why I keep bringing it up. I think I keep bringing it up because it's legitimately terrifying that anyone could look at Nigel Farage and go, yes, that is a man who knows what he is talking about. Uh, then again, people watch these videos and hopefully some of them think that is a man who knows what he's talking about, despite the fact it clearly isn't. That's why the series is going to be called Pretending I Know What I'm Talking About. Uh, <sighs> take a breath, Dick. Take a deep breath. Oh, crack your fingers. That was my wrist, not my fingers. Never mind. Why are you still here? Bye.